All right, go ahead, Todd. Okay, thank you all for being here today. We have a great crowd. Um, I would like to welcome you from the OLC Presenter Services uh, Committee uh, for this session. Uh, Sherry serves as the Director of the Coastal Office of Online Learning at Coastal Carolina University. She's a teaching associate uh, with the psychology department at CCU and specializes in teaching developmental psychology classes such as child and adolescent psychology and geront gerontology online. She served in higher education within the field of online and digital learning now for over two decades, including in the role of instructional designer, LMS administrator, faculty member, consultant, and administrator. She presents frequently and is a longtime OLC attendee and volunteer with our OLC Innovate, Collaborate, and Accelerate conferences. This year, she's serving as the OLC Innovate Conference co-chair for the Equity and Incl Inclusion Subcommittee. Today, Sherry will be presenting uh, some tips and best practices for presenting in the conference format that we call Discovery Sessions. It is her favorite format to present in at all the OLC conferences. And uh, please, let's give a warm welcome uh, to Sherry, who you have all been hearing here for a little while. So <laughs> let's go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So welcome um, everybody, if you've just joined us. Um, I'm so excited, what a great crowd. Um, we've got a, a great turnout today. I'm so excited to have everybody here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and again, we'll be taking questions at the end. Please do feel free to drop questions into your uh, chat box as we go along, if you have questions as well. Um, so I wanna talk to you a little bit about discovery sessions and let you know, um, first of all, as Todd said, discovery sessions are absolutely my favorite discussion format that we've got, um, not just at OLC Innovate, but in fact at any of the conferences um, that, that Innovate uh, or that OLC actually offers for us. Discovery sessions, um, I came up with three things that in my head best describes discovery sessions and this particular format. So the three words that I chose were collaborative, fun, and probably what I hope to be the most um, impactful and, and most uh, biggest sigh of relief that you guys are going to have is that last one, low stress. So <laughs> discovery sessions are incredible. Um, they probably require in general the least amount of preparation um, overall, and I hope uh, induce the least amount of anxiety, in fact. And so I love them. I think you will love them. If you've never presented before in discovery session, I think you're going to have an amazing time with us this time. Um, I'm going to walk you through, as you'll see in the agenda here, just three big focus areas in our brief agenda today. First, we're going to talk about what is a discovery session. Then I'll give you a few best practices about how to pull information together and how to share it in this unique format. And then from there, we're going to use uh, the last few minutes of the opportunity that we have to get today with the presentation to talk about how to engage with a really unique group that is flowing to and from during the entire discovery session. Um, so I would ask as we're starting, um, most of this presentation is going to have snapshots and photos because I think that's how we all learn best is to see examples of what a discovery session looks like. Um, and so I'm going to talk first about what are discovery sessions. And as I start talking about this and I start telling you kind of what to expect, go ahead and if you have opportunity to click on the chat, if you've ever presented in a discovery session before, would you let us know that in the chat? Um, and if this is your first time to actually present in the discovery session format, would you drop that into the chat? And I'll be paying attention to that on my other screen uh, while we're doing the presentation today. Perfect. Yes, lots of first timers. Wonderful. So here's something that's really exciting. We have hundreds and hundreds of presentations in many different formats. And out of all of the different presentations that we have coming up, for us in Chicago this year at OLC Innovate, there are actually 92 of us, including me, who are going to be giving a discovery session format. And so if you are a first timer, you are amongst a happy group of 92 who will actually all be presenting together. Yeah, welcome. Well, we've got a lot of us all doing this for the first time. That's fantastic. Um, so the example that you see there on the right hand side, that's an example of a discovery session format um, that we had in uh, previous years. If you think about a discovery session similar to perhaps an electronic poster discovery session, then that's a good example of what you might expect. Typically these sessions last 45 minutes in length 
In general, the 45 minutes allows for you to do a short presentation that runs about 10 to 15 minutes and you're going to give that exact same presentation on a cycle about three times. So if you've got 45 minutes, you're gonna do a 10 to 15 minute presentation and you're going to recycle that three times. So if you have ever been a graduate student, um, and like I have, like many of you I'm sure have as well, then in that case, you may have done a poster presentation. For us at OLC, our electronic posters are presented in a discovery session format. So you'll bring your own device, like you see here, you'll bring a laptop along with you. Um, and as you'll see on the next screen, OLC has actually even upgraded this um, so that we now actually have uh, digital monitors, large screen digital monitors. So all you have to bring along with you is just your laptop and we're going to actually assist you with getting those um, configured. You'll have it plugged in so that you'll have a display on your digital monitor. You'll also have your laptop for being able to control it. And if you can see on that left hand side photo that I'm displaying for you, what you'll also have as an opportunity is you'll actually be able to see um, a table. So you'll be able to spread out materials. Um, you and any co-presenters that you may have alongside you will be able to present um, and share materials, both paper and digitally. So the setup is actually fairly simplistic. Typically what I encourage everybody to do is try to uh, and go, go ahead and work with any co-presenters you have to build up um, slides that don't span any longer than seven. So if you have an idea, so for example, one of the topics I'm going to be presenting on is about digital accessibility. And I'm going to be sharing a really cool initiative that we have here on my university campus, but I only have to limit it to a total of seven slides. And I have to make sure that those seven slides can fit into no longer than 15 minutes. Because after the end of that 15 minutes, individuals are going to start cycling out and we're gonna have a second round of individuals who are gonna stop by my table. Um, so we're going to look at some more photos. We're going to talk a little bit about all of the different, uh, all the different areas um, that we're going to see and what we can expect to see as we move forward. Um, so I want to talk just very briefly um, and definitely to acknowledge something that actually just started last year. So you see that logo down at the bottom where it says MindEdge. That's actually one of our corporate vendors. Um, MindEdge actually started last year at the OLC Accelerate um, kindly donating these monitors to us for us to use to increase accessibility, increase our instructional methodology in terms of being able to present. Before that, we only had our laptops. And so we definitely, thank you, Katie, for putting that into the chat. We definitely want to um, acknowledge them for being so kind um, to be able to, uh, to present those digital uh, monitors for us so that we can plug those in and make sure that we have another way to actually display the materials. Um, so I'm going to pause for just one second because I see that there is a question. All right, perfect. Um, I'm going to put a pin into your question, David, because we're actually going to hop on that one in just a second um, as we get to the design for the presentation itself. Um, so the setup is, uh, is pretty straightforward. You're going to have a long table, like the one that you see on the photo that's displayed on the left. Um, you'll be able to set up any kinds of material. You'll bring your own device. Um, and then as we come in and look at, we look at the next slide together, um, we'll be able to go through and present our materials. Um, so I do see that um, we've got a couple more questions that are coming in and they're all focused on how we present our material. So let me, um, let me talk about that. The idea here is if your item, if your content was submitted and if your topic again was something like digital accessibility, then what you need to do is you need to pluck out the best ideas and the best materials and the highlights that you have from that particular presentation that was accepted into um, our call for proposals and you're going to be able to highlight that um, in approximately uh, 10 to 12 to maybe maximum of 15 minutes in order to make sure that you have time to greet individuals as they drop by your session. Um, so the idea is um, find your best idea, your best three ideas, your best five ideas, perhaps create a slideshow, perhaps create a couple of images. Um, individuals like to tend to put it into slideshow, but it's certainly not required. However, you feel comfortable 
presenting the information. Um, let's go ahead and look at a couple of the additional um, photos. So this one is actually me, um, but let's look at a couple of the additional photos to give you some ideas of what the design is gonna look like. Um, in general, when you come in, and this is the reason why I love to show this particular photo. So you're seeing me in the center of this one, but I actually had two co-presenters, the one in the front and the one, uh, the lady that's to uh, my right, as you'll see here, are all going to be um, the ones that are doing the presentation. And as Katie has just mentioned in the chat, you'll be surrounded by um, 10 other tables in a big open space. And so the idea is, there's going to be individuals flowing in and flowing out. And your goal as a discovery session presenter is to find a way to attract people to your table so that they're gonna come and they're gonna ask questions, they're gonna listen to your presentation, and they're going to uh, want to stop and want to find ways to engage. So you'll notice that there's a lot of people at this particular one that I'm sharing here. Um, this was actually a fantastic uh, selfie that my co-presenter took as individuals were stopping by. And this is where I like to um, give you some ideas specifically about how we go about managing that crowd um, as you're doing your setup. So what are you going to bring with you to these sessions? You're going to bring your, uh, you're going to bring your device. Um, if you happen to have a Mac, then you may want to bring a connector to make sure that you can connect to the HDMI um, that we'll have. And Katie will discuss that at the end as we're talking about some of the final setup. Um, you may make a slideshow in order to highlight five to six to seven um, points or slides that you want to discuss and you'll plan to probably go through start your presentation you'll go through the entire presentation um, you're going to welcome individuals as they come up if you have co-presenters you might actually assign one of your co-presenters as a greeter and you may be actually taking turns doing the the slide presentations as well Let's go ahead and look at this one um, at our very next slide because this will give you an opportunity to start thinking about well, what do I do once I start the slideshow? I have some great content. Um, Sherry said to build five to seven slides, maybe maximum. Um, so I've built these five to seven slides to highlight my, my best practices and to highlight the biggest points of my research and of my content that I want to share. So I've built those slides. What do I do in order to make sure that that everybody stops and everybody joins and everybody's listening and everybody's engaged. So this is one of my favorite slides, in fact, um, because this is the one where I get to tell you to actually be creative and figure out ways to attract them to your table. So I'm going to point back at this one for a second. You see that table and also this one. So some of the things that I've seen individuals do that are super creative is number one, bowls of candy. Um, and, and Katie acknowledged that I should actually um, preface that with small amounts of candy. So you don't want to bring 10 pounds of candy, but I encourage you to consider bringing a bowl of candy um, in order to encourage people to stop by your, uh, your table. So you want to make it fun. You want to make it engaging. You want to set up your table as if you're looking to attract people to stop by. The name of your session is going to be on a, on a card. Um, individuals will know how to locate you from that. You're going to greet individuals as they pop up. You're going to welcome to your session. Um, this it, photo that you see that's presented on the slide here was a co-presenter um, and she and I actually did take specific roles. So one of us was greeting and one of, uh, was, one of us was taking turns in leading the presentation. And then about halfway through, we stopped and I became the greeter and she was doing the presentation. And so there are lots of different ways that you can actually configure it, um, depending on what you're most comfortable with, which makes this one of the more um, engaging, one of the more flexible, one of the most entertaining and fun formats that you could possibly imagine doing. Um, I feel like one of the things that has been a best tip that I like to share with individuals is point number two under the do column. Um, and I'm seeing, I've been watching everything pop up in uh, the chat. One of the things that I've found to be exceptionally useful is to actually have multiple devices. And so, um, what I like to do is I personally like to bring my own device. So I might bring a laptop along with me 
Keep in mind that you're also going to have a digital monitor for display, so you can have individuals looking at the monitor, um, and then you can be controlling that on your device. And if you happen to have a co-presenter, you also have the ability to bring a second device. That can be an iPad, that could be a second laptop. Um, and what I enjoy doing personally, um, to acknowledge one of the comments, that one of the great tips that was just added into the chat is, we really like to have an, a station where individuals who pop up perhaps later into your 10 minute pitch um, can browse along and maybe catch up and they can look through slides um, as they are progressing through the particular session. Um, if you have something that's a demonstration, you can have a second laptop or a second iPad set up for individuals can, so they can individually uh, browse as they're popping up into your station as well. Um, I think it's actually fantastic to, to have the multiple devices if you have that capacity to do so. Some of the more creative things that I've seen individuals do, we've had some beautiful um, table covers, we've had some um, really imaginative displays, um, of course the candy bowls, the popcorn bowls, um, we've had even uh, somebody brought a, a beautiful lamp. I'm going to discourage you from borrowing the lamp from the hotel. Um, so I won't say that anybody has done that, but somebody did have a lamp um, a couple of sessions back. So somehow or another, there was a lamp and it was attractive. Um, so think about different ways that you might design your table. Um, what are ways to make it fun? What are ways to be, make it engaging? Um, in general, Eric, uh, Eric, I see your question about the handouts. Um, in general, we actually do prefer for you to make um, all of your slides that you may be presenting and all of your digital materials or links. We prefer for you to link those into the conference management system. Um, I personally encourage you to bring between 20 and 25 because I feel like in the 45 minute session um, and three rounds of presenting, usually 25 is a sufficient number to have. And then in general, we, um, we usually, if, if for whatever reason you run out of the printed handouts, then we just encourage individuals to view the information on the conference management system. Um, so notice that one of the things that I put under the do not column is do not fail to pause and recognize new arrivers. So if you've never done a presentation before, um, then one of the things that, if you've never done a presentation in a discovery session format before, then one of the things that oftentimes is interesting to note is you may be four slides into a seven slide set and you're still going to have individuals popping up. And the way that I provide a best practice tip is if you see individuals pop up to your discovery session table and you're in midstream and presenting, just simply nod to them, wave to them, acknowledge them, um, just as I was doing as new individuals join, and make sure that you uh, acknowledge them, greet them, and then at the end, once you've finished up with your, your brief pitch, as you're about to start the second uh, round of doing the presentation again, if somebody has joined late, encourage them to stay. Um, encourage them to, to stay and hear the beginning of it again. Um, um, and that's a great way to make sure that you incorporate anybody who's a late arriver. One of the tips that I like to do, somebody had mentioned earlier that, uh, you know, how many handouts would you have? I actually always have a handout in my hand and I make it a point that if anybody arrives late, that is what I do to acknowledge my late arrivers. I, I literally will stop um, and hand, hand one to them and that's my way of acknowledging them. So I'll hand them a handout as they're coming in as a way of welcoming them. I make sure that I orient my body to them as well and make sure that they see that I'm acknowledging that they're there. Um, and under the do not column is do not use audio and video as a primary, I've been watching our chat. Um, so one of the things that um, is important to acknowledge about the discovery sessions is again, there's going to be 11 of us um, in a large room, 11 separate tables and a large amount of individuals flowing to and from the different tables. So we can't use audio and video as a primary, but um, one of the things that you can do is if you do bring a secondary device, such as an iPad or a second laptop, then you are welcome to bring a headset and they can browse independently and listen to that information separately um, if you'd like for them to have a demonstration. And I have seen that done exceptionally well in our discovery sessions, both at Innovate and Accelerate. In fact, I've done that um, with some of my colleagues in a previous presentation for discovery session as well. So if, if you have a um, supplement that does need to have audio and video and it's something that can be a secondary source for them to listen to as an example, feel free to bring that, but make sure that you you don't use that as your primary display because they won't be able to hear any audio and video um, displayed very well. But it's a great idea to use that in the secondary device. 
Um, we've already acknowledged the last point there about using second devices and handouts. Um, so I want to go ahead and um, hop to this next slide because again, this is a great demonstration of what to expect um, as individuals are flowing to and from. So you're going to notice in this particular presentation, um, the individual is presenting. She's oriented towards the uh, the screen, and she has individuals who are asking questions on the side. So this is a good a, a good frame of reference for exactly what this is going to look like when individuals stop by and see you. Be very conscientious about the space allowance. We'll have both a large table as well as a lower table um, in order to accommodate all of our individuals um, who may be arriving and attending the sessions. I do encourage you, if you've not thought about it yet, um, you might have a mechanism for accumulating names for individuals who drop by your session. Again, I'm going to strongly encourage you to be creative about this. Um, I've seen individuals do something as simple as having a sign-up sheet. I've seen individuals have a little drop box where, in, in, where attendees can drop in their business cards. Um, I've even seen something creative where uh, people could come in and they could scan a QR code. Um, so it's up to you totally how you want to do this, but I will encourage you to find a way to actually uh, check names for individuals who drop into your session because there are 11 sessions going on at one time. Um, they might want to pop in and hear a bit of yours and a bit of two or three others. So to make sure that you have the best opportunity to share all of your research with them, go ahead and accumulate names in a way that's going to make the most sense to you. Um, and then also in terms of how to include participants, one of my favorite uh, items to recommend as a best practice is don't be afraid to use your technology. Um, again, one of the ways that I've seen this work very effectively and very creatively um, and I have also incorporated this in a couple of my discovery sessions myself is I've actually incorporated a poll everywhere into my brief five or six slides and I've asked individuals who as they are attending to respond to the poll and so we've accumulated responses throughout the entire presentation by using poll everywhere so if you're comfortable with using some of the um, polling software that's a great way to uh, accumulate responses and, and add a little tiny bit of uh, interactivity into your slides as you move along um, and also to kind of poll everybody and see um, if they have any questions to solicit responses um, and I've definitely seen this work um, very effectively so far. All right, so this is uh, another snapshot of a, uh, a, a, good, a good example of what this looks like when there's a lot of different individuals presenting. Um, in this one, you're seeing that there's a group of individuals chatting. So this is one of the reasons, one of the reasons why I select this particular photo is to show how informal um, and hopefully low anxiety the discovery sessions formats actually are. So this is an opportunity for you if you're at the beginning stages of research, if you're at the end of research, if you're like me and you have some really great best practices that you you know have worked really well on your campus and you just want to share it with other colleagues on other campuses this is how you have an opportunity to walk them through share the information get ideas back and actually be truly collaborative um, in, in in an open space um, and and this particular presentation there were three laptops as well as I believe I think we also had a tablet at that one as well and so totally the sky's the limit um, as far as how you want to interact, um, how many people and how many devices um, uh, are totally up to you as far as how you want to, uh, to interact and engage. But it will give you the opportunity to, um, to, to, to really um, engage in a, a really interactive and collaborative way with individuals in, uh, in the audience. All right, um, so being mindful of our time and making sure that um, we have an opportunity to, um, to answer questions um, and also to address some of the items that I've seen have come into the chat. Um, again, I, I love to show you examples of what this looks like. This is a fantastic snapshot that shows you about the approximate length and size of the table that you might expect. Again, we're gonna have a high table like this one as well as a low table. Um, so you'll have opportunities to put your materials um, and individuals will have an opportunity um, to arrive and view the material both on your laptop as well as on the digital uh, digital monitors that are being provided to us from MindEdge. Okay, 
All right, so let's uh, let's also talk just very briefly as we are thinking about um, the design and um, the idea of how you're going to construct your slides. If you've not looked at that yet, um, some final tips on how specifically to engage individuals once you've got them. If you have your candy bowl, um, if you've run up to your hotel room and you've popped some popcorn, which I encourage, um, and you run downstairs and you have a bowl of popcorn and you um, recruited them to come to your session. What are you going to do? So we talked about live polling. Um, we talked about hands-on with being able to maybe even give them a, a secondary device for them to browse. Um, one of the things that I've seen that's totally engaging, they love when you take photos of them. And some of the photos that you're seeing today that I've shared with you um, are, are a great example of how we've done that. We've actually engaged with individuals um, by live tweeting with them. Um, notice one of the very first tips there is make sure that you start, start your five to six um, slideshow uh, slide deck with the name of your information. Um, and if you have a specific hashtag that you're using, make sure that you include that hashtag that way as they're tweeting um, and as you encourage them to tweet throughout your discovery session that they can make sure and tag your session appropriately. Some things that I love to think about as well is um, talking about, you know, how do, I, how do I fit everything about my research into five or six or seven slides? And I know that's tough. Um, you've you've got to be very compact. You have to understand that, again, you're only hitting the highlights and you're really getting them engaged. And the idea is um, on the conference repository, the sky's the limit. If you want to upload your slide deck that only has five or six slides that you present during the discovery session, please do. But you can also upload an expanded version of it. And I strongly encourage you to do that. Um, that's one of the tips that I and my co-presenters for discovery sessions um, definitely do every time. So we'll have multiple formats. We'll have both the shortened version that we present at the discovery session, as well as a longer format that includes additional information, additional references, additional links out to um, Google Slides decks and additional information that may be useful um, for individuals. I encourage you also thinking about as they come up, you know, ask their stories, use the live polling, um, be collaborative in whatever way that you're comfortable. Um, again, if you happen to have a co-presenter or more than one co-presenter, feel free to um, take on roles and one of you can be a greeter. You could take turns and, and cover two slides each. Um, you can hand out candy. You can hand out um, the materials. Um, just totally make this your own, um, but understand that the goal of this is you will have individuals coming through. They'll be coming um, sometimes in packs, sometimes they'll be coming late, um, and you just want to make sure that you're engaging, you're sharing, you're collaborating, and you're having as much fun as you can um, available as you're um, going through and you're greeting and you're sharing all of your research. All right, so I'm going to pause here for just a second. Um, it looks like we got a question from Melissa about chairs. Katie, would you mind answering? Thank you. Yeah, so there is a chair. Perfect. Um, in the past, there are chairs. I will tell you um, that specifically um, for me, I tend to use the chair as another alternative for me to, um, to store my materials. <laughs> um, I feel like I'm, I'm up on my feet and I'm greeting individuals and I'm talking the whole time. So even if there is a chair there, um, a lot of times um, we, we, we don't get to, to sit in it as much. Um, you're welcome to um, if you do need to, to do that. Um, but a lot of times we don't get to, we, we don't get to sit. We're on our, our feet the whole time because you stay busy during this whole session. So um, yes, absolutely, Christine, exactly. You're busy. So a lot of times the chair is where I put my purse um, and my work bag, but I never get to actually sit at it. Um, again, I'm going to point one last time at that final bullet, lamps, candy, and ambiance. So think of ways to attract people to your table. Um, I'm a big uh, chocolate person, so I'll come by your table if you have milk chocolate. Um, think about different ways that you want to attract them. You're going to think of ways to highlight your topic. Um, you're going to compact it into um, how to share information in five or six or absolutely maximum seven slides. Um, you're going to cover that in about 10 minutes and we're going to wait and we're going to cycle and we're going to do the same pitch again and we're going to do that total pitch three times during that 45 minutes. 
Okay. Um, so I added, a, I added a slide here that says, do you have a success story? And I was watching the chat at the very beginning when I asked how many of you are newbies um, and how many of you have presented before. Um, Todd, you've done discovery sessions before. Um, do you have any best tips that you might um, share with individuals about what they, what you've felt has been most successful for you in doing discovery sessions? Uh, other than my remarkably charming personality and uh, whatnot, um, I, I did make a bunch of business cards that had a URL to the, the resources that I had offered. Mm -hmm. uh, so similarly to uploading them to the repository at the conference site, I also created a website um, just in WordPress uh, to share various types of resources. So having those little cards to hand out to everybody uh, seems to work really well for me. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I think that's a great suggestion. And again, the conference repository, um, I've seen a bunch of questions pop in about that. Um, don't be afraid to upload materials. Don't be afraid to upload materials the day of. It's, it's a fantastic location um, to add all your information. I tend to be a Google user. Um, and so I tend to, thank you, Katie, exactly. I tend to specifically just drop the URL um, into anything that I want to share with them, whether it's a blog, whether it's um, a, a video, anything that you might want to share with them, you can drop into that conference repository. Um, if you're taking photos um, with them the day off, then feel free to tell them. Say, hey, I'm going to collect this into a slideshow. I'm going to share it. Go back and look afterwards. And that will encourage them also to pop back into the conference repository so that they can take a look at what you've shared with them as well. All right, so um, I'm going to go ahead and page forward um, to this uh, this last slide that I have um, to share with you as well. These are actually hot links, um, and what these are, Katie's actually mentioned this for us in uh, in the chat. But the hot links actually go directly to the presenter services page, where you can find additional tips and ideas about how to do best practices for designing slides. Um, there's also a downloadable slide template that you can use. Um, there's a a second link there that also lists um, what we call our presenter guides um, and that's a quick link that goes to all of our presenter guides thank you Katie um, for putting that in there um, and then the very third link the one that's on the bottom on the left hand column that's a quick link that goes to our presenter guide that's specific to the discovery session and it covers many of the tips that we talked about today um, minimum slide length it talks about having the high low tables um, it also talks about um, at this point making sure that you highlight your best practices, find ways to engage your individuals as they browse through, um, and it just kind of succinctly in about one page covers some of the items that we've talked about today. Um, on the far right hand side of the slide that I'm sharing right now, you'll see that there's a quick link to a blog. Um, that's actually a blog that I wrote last fall specifically about why do I love discovery sessions? Why is Sherry so <laughs> excited about discovery sessions and why are these actually my, my favorite one? And then if you'll notice at the bottom of that slide, um, you see that little icon that has uh, the light bulb on it. Uh, if you mentioned, if you saw that I mentioned at the beginning of today's presentation, there are 92 of us actually doing discovery sessions. And I like for us to all be part of a group. So I encourage anybody who's doing a discovery session, in addition to creating a, a title slide that has the name of your presentation and your name and contact information, feel free to use that icon as well. You'll see it when you look for your presentation um, in the program listing off of the OLC Innovate page, you'll actually see that there's a little icon on beside it that looks just like this one. I like for all of us to be part of a happy group of discovery session presenters. And so I stamp all of my presentations um, that are discovery sessions with this logo as well. Okay, um, and Katie, or do we have time to go ahead and take questions now? Why don't we go through the logistics? It's gonna okay. be really fast because I think we've hit on most of those points already, but Perfect. just reminders. And then we'll have, we'll open the floor up for some questions. Perfect. Okay, so we've already talked a lot about how the room is going to be set up. It is one large open space. Uh, it's the ballroom promenade. And um, it will have, actually, a, it says 1 through 13, but I believe we're down to 11 in each, um, 11 tables in each, uh, I'm sorry, 11 tables in each concurrent session. So uh, you will look for your position number. You can actually see in the top picture, there's a just a piece of cardstock with a position number taped to the table to identify which position you are. You will see in the program listing, 
not right now because I haven't updated yet, but in the next week or two, each position number. Um, so that'll be added to your session listing and printed in the program booklet available on the mobile app, on the website program listing, so that you can identify what table you're supposed to set up at and participants, attendees can identify where to find your presentation. So you'll see that. And also in that top picture, you'll see there's a stanchion on the table with a sign that has your title and the lead presenter and, you know, date, time, concurrent session information and all that to make it easier for people to find your presentation as well. So um, that is kind of how the room is set up each table will have that monitor from MindEdge that we talked about before. Um, I, it's somewhere in the range of a 25 to 30 inch monitor, I believe. So, and those do require an HDMI connection. So you'll want to make sure that your device that you're bringing to present off of will does have an HDMI port. If it does not, please make sure you bring your adapter so that whatever port you do have can be converted into an HDMI port for that connection. Each station will have a power strip. Um, and as we talked about before, each station will have that high counter and a low table with a chair. There's a question in the chat, how early can we be in the room to set up? So there are sessions in this area during each concurrent session. There are 15 minute breaks between each concurrent session. So I would say, you know, you can certainly plan to arrive on the earlier side of that 15 minute break, mm -hmm. but please be aware that this room and all these tables do have presentations in them during each concurrent session. And one of the things, I'm sorry, Katie, one of the things I was going to also recommend, particularly since we have so many of you here who have never attended a discovery session or have never presented one, I'll tell you my very, my very first time ever that I presented one of these a couple of years back, the, the very best thing that I did was I actually attended one before I had to do my own presentation. So if you'll check the conference schedule, um, look at the very first offering of discovery sessions, and if there happens to be a round of discovery sessions that are being offered, offered um, prior to yours, go attend one. Look at the different ideas um, about how everybody is actually set up and also how the navigation is because being able to um, see these photos is, is fabulous. It gives you a great idea of how to interact and what to expect, but honestly being physically in a space where everybody is doing a discovery session and even watching uh, the variety that we each choose um, and how we decide to adapt and, uh, and present in here is honestly the best way to understand um, how, how easy this is uh, as far as the setup and, and everything else. And OLC is always great. I'll just acknowledge that since I'm, I don't work for them. OLC is great about having a person there to help you. So if you have any difficulty um, with, uh, with getting, getting everything configured or getting everything on your table, they always have somebody there to help. Thanks, Sherry. That's a great reminder. Um, we do have a staff member assigned to the discovery session area. And if you need assistance, um, have a tech problem or anything like that, please feel free to um, talk to the staff member who is in that area. And then they can you know, if, if they are not able to help you, if it's a tech issue or something, they can call or message us to send a um, an AV or an IT person up to assist quickly. So um, the other thing on this slide that I just want to mention, I know we've talked about it before in extensively, but one of the most common comments that I see on the session evaluations post-conference is that the presenters did not upload their presentation materials and people want those. So please, we strongly encourage you to upload your slides, your handouts, et cetera, for the to the conference management system. I will send out an email um, end of February and then a reminder in the beginning of March with presenter logistics, uploading your resources to the conference repository will be included in those emails. So it, it, like I said, it is just so important, not only from a sharing information with your attendee standpoint, but also from an accessibility standpoint for people to be able to access those materials. 
And Katie, I, I definitely want to um, totally support that as well. One of the more creative things that I've seen individuals do recently is when they do um, share their slides in advance and share their materials in advance, one of the first things they do when individuals attend uh, their discovery sessions is they ask them to um, pull it up and say, hey, have you, have you accessed our material? Will you pull it up and you can browse along with us on your own device? And it definitely addresses accessibility concerns, but it also lets them browse through um, the slides at their own pace on their own device too. So it's a great engagement technique. Thanks, Sherry. Uh, ready for the next slide, actually. Okay, Sherry. perfect. Okay, so um, the 16 9 slide format is less applicable to discovery session presenters, but since we are going to be encouraging you to hook up to that external display, typically displays these days are more in a 16 9 format. So just a note for that. Um, and again, the session evaluation slide is also important and we encourage you to post that as part of your rotating slide deck so that you're encouraging attendees to submit evaluations. So for each evaluation that attendee submits, they would be entered into a drawing um, and it is for we have five individual $25 gift cards for Amazon, you know, so I pick, we pick five winners randomly after the conference. Also for the presenters that have the most evaluations, there's a drawing there for um, a price for one presenter as well. So it's, it, we encourage you to encourage your attendees to submit those evaluations for you. Uh, also, we've already touched on this. There is wireless internet in your, in the conference space as a presenter. <laughs> We also, while we do have the wireless internet, my recommendation is to make sure that you have a, a hard, you know, a, co a copy on your local machine as well, just in case we never anticipate there being problems. But I always recommend having a, a local backup on your device. Um, and then as we already talked, there's no OLC staff member in that area to assist as needed or call for additional assistance as needed. And now I think we have a little bit of time to open up for questions. Uh, and we have uh, one last slide to uh, cover here as well. <laughs> That's right, um, thanks, Todd. Yeah, you bet. So uh, the OLC wants you to be successful and have a really good experience. And to that end, uh, we have the uh, guides available. We have these webinars. Uh, and we also have coaching available. Um, there is a link uh, I just put in the chat that goes to the page where you can sign up for coaching. Uh, if you feel you'd like some more help uh, creating your experience for uh, the people at the conference, uh, please let us know and sign up. Um, and I, I think we should give a, a big uh, thank you to Sherry here, and then we can go on to uh, some final questions, although uh, we definitely have had lots of them answered in the chat. But let's give a big thanks to Sherry for being here today. Excellent job. And if there are any other questions, uh, please feel free to put those in the chat now. And uh, Sherry, if you'd like, or others, we can answer those. Thanks, guys. Any other questions? at all before we go. So I'm going to flip to this very last slide um, just so everybody sees this. So this is my contact information again. Katie um, is phenomenal and Katie will be sharing out the, uh, the slides here. So you'll actually have um, my contact information if you need me. Um, I am also, if you're interested, um, I'm also doing a discovery session presentation. So you're welcome to come drop by, watch mine. Um, I'll be the one with the candy, definitely. So you'll see me there um, and you're welcome to attend mine if you'd like. Uh, like to do that. And then I've got my um, contact information, including my LinkedIn there as well. Okay. Thank you guys so very much. I'm so glad that everybody was here. Um, and again, Katie will actually be sharing out um, the, the additional slides afterwards. And that includes information about the recording. Um, we always share a link to the recording out um, from presenter services off of the, the Innovate slide uh, as well. So you'll see that. Okay. Thank you guys so much. I'm gonna be here to answer any questions. If anybody has anything, you're welcome to grab the mic. You're welcome to drop uh, any, any questions into the chat as well.